There we go. This meeting is being recorded. It is being recorded. You got perfect timing too. I just finished all my crappy morning grading. Ew. Ew, I gotta do it. Yeah. So what's up? I, we haven't talked in a long time. Give me an update on Jack. Well, there's a pandemic outside. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and I've got terrible allergies, which keeps making me think, oh, shit, I got COVID. Yeah, I feel like every time anyone feels anything in their body right now, they're like, well, it's time. Yeah, everything. Purple toes, <laughs> inability to breathe, a headache. Anything. So what uh, are you doing? Uh, sorry, go ahead. I uh, signed a lease two days before um, COVID was announced in the media. So that was fun and stressful. So I was like, great, how am I going to pay rent if I don't have a job? Are you so, still working at the museum? I am not. I left the museum about a year ago and I started working at Prince Inc., which is a silk screen printing shop downtown Norfolk. Okay. And um, I'm a, basically uh, the majority of the stuff that I do there is like the seamstress stuff. So I also their garments and different things, but I also do a lot of their shipping and receiving and other stuff. It's kind of a small operation, but we do a lot of work. So everybody has like 10 different roles that they play there. How, how big is the crew there? Um... I think there's nine of us total. That's cool. So it's using all like the costume because I remember in your thesis project that you did, you were doing like the costumes and you had everyone. Yes. In a circle, right? That was yours. Yeah. Um, well, so cool. now I'm basically doing that, but on a commercial level. <laughs> <laughs> good. It's good to get paid to do what you like to do. Yes. It's nice. And I love the shop. I love the people that work there. So it's good. It's a good deal. Awesome. And you're now in a house, yeah? Your lease? Yes. Um, so I did, I was able to pay <laughs> the, the, uh, the bills, even though there's a pandemic out there, but thanks to that government money, because I haven't worked <laughs> in, a, in a while. So oh, so I've the shop's been, closed? Yeah, I mean, we've been doing jobs, but most of the stuff, like the big jobs that we were doing were like, you know, a thousand shirts for New York Times and stuff for races and shows and all that stuff was canceled. <coughs> so mm. basically now it's slowed down a lot and I've done most everything from home. I've been sewing a shit ton of masks and selling those to people, friends. So, so <laughs> people order Jack's masks. <laughs> I saw that you, you had them on your Instagram, right? Yes. Okay, people go to, what is it, Isle of Jack? Isle of Jack, yes. And, and order Jack's COVID masks. Jack yeah. needs your, Jack, Jack needs your, Jack and needs yeah, buy more copies of the book because Jack's getting a quarter of all that too. Mm -hmm. So we'll, yeah. <laughs> we'll help Jack get through the pandemic. Yeah, and you know, wearing a mask is just, it's just a nice thing to do. You're going out. Well, yeah, I and mean, all of you cosplayers, you're pretty comfortable with that already, I'm assuming, right? Yes. <laughs> For sure. Um, yeah, I've had a hard time adjusting mm -hmm. to the masks. The masks are really annoying to me. But I'm right. not so good, good at that lady katana. <laughs> <laughs> I am... Um, uh, I try not to go anywhere that I need a mask. I try to just stay here. I'm very fortunate that I can fucking hunker down and not leave for the most part. I do make rounds to drop off masks like around town on my moped. <laughs> so I'll just like call people and be like, hey, I'm leaving this in your mailbox. Do not come out and greet me. <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, with teaching, I'm lucky I get to do that. But I don't know. It's just hard to not like go see your parents or yeah you know things like that i, I don't know how people are doing it yes. um, or at least like i would be so tempted if i were you to go to the beach 
Yeah. Um, we go, we surf, so we'll go to the beach at like 5 a.m. and leave by like 7 a.m. And there's like nobody there, but Hampton Roads is fucking up right now. We really are. There's so many, so many cases in Hampton Roads and Norfolk specifically has been spiking. So mm. I don't want to see anyone's face ever, ever again. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, that makes sense. That's a dense area. We're, we're facing that here, too. I mean, mm -hmm. California, obviously, is bullshit. Um, looking forward to getting out. So yeah. uh, let's talk about, like, I think people, the reason I asked for this is some of the comments on, that's what I'm looking at over here, is we asked people what they wanted out of the campaign. And um, people are just interested in hearing, like, your opinion about the book uh from your side of the story why <laughs> you're involved how you got involved with this and uh, i don't know what you think about it yeah um i it's been so i feel like it's been so long <laughs> it's like dug out of the dirt and shaking the dust off of it um obviously you approached me and you're like hey can we take some pictures in local heroes which is of course the marvelous splendiferous gracious and awesome comic book store in Ghent, Norfolk, and uh, it's just a cool space in general, and I, I absolutely was down for some photos, for sure. Um, I think we did it in one night. We did it all in one night, right? Uh, the, the first one, so what, what happened, I'm sure people have heard this part, but you would come into you were in my summer class which was i think like six weeks right yeah yeah and and whenever i'm talking about the, <laughs> my career path at the beginning of the semester i talk about that i love comics so jack came up and was like hey i manage a comic store come in and i was i was like i'm leaving in six weeks i don't got any money i don't want to go in the <laughs> comic shop uh. um, and then like three weeks into the semester. So halfway through the semester, Dave told me, hey, why don't you go photograph, um, go to your local comic shop and ask if you can photograph someone closing up. And I was like, well, perfect. So I, yeah, I asked Jack and we did that first one. The first photo shoot was, yeah, just in one night, but then- We got it done relatively quick. I do remember that. Yeah, Jack's really great about that. But then, after I did that initial four, Dave said he wanted more and I had moved back to California because my right. my tenure at ODU had, in, well, not tenure, <laughs> my time, my year at ODU had ended. So then I flew does back out. Does anyone get tenured at ODU, really? <laughs> what, say that again? I said, does anyone at ODU get tenured, really? Uh, I don't know. I was there for, <laughs> <laughs> I was there for one year. Yes, there were tenured people there. Uh, <laughs> But yeah, so Dave asked me to, then he paid to fly me back out and we did that second shoot with Dodge. Right. And gotcha. that, one, yeah, yeah. that one took a, what, what band, we, we talk about that in the comic that you wanted to go see a band and I kept you late. Do you remember what band? You no remember? idea. Okay. What band? Where did I want to see it? I don't know. You wanted to go to, uh, what's that? God damn. It's been, it's been so long. Um, I know it's like a, been an age. Yeah. Well, <laughs> what's your opinion on that, by the way? Like, how how was uh, what's your perception of this been in terms of all the like? Uh, did you think this was ever going to happen for real, or is it just like this weird, weird guy took all these pictures of me and made these drawings, <laughs> and now he's not doing anything with it? Uh, I was very trusting because we're friends. And also I really, really, really loved your artwork. So I was like, you know what, even if he just makes this into cool looking stuff, that's enough for me. So I wasn't ever really um, focused on it becoming a thing because any, I knew that whenever you turn it into, it would be a cool thing anyways. Um, and I remember thinking, and this is very, <laughs> probably pretty shitty of me but I remember seeing your artwork just in class and being like wow this is a teacher whose art I actually enjoy so um that definitely put a lot of trust in the project I guess before it was 
even real in my mind, but um, uh, I think just, I obviously was managing a comic book store and was surrounded by artwork all day long and drawings all day long and stories all day long. I knew that whatever we made with it, whatever you made with it, whatever Dave made with it, it was just going to be, it be cool. It'd be a conversation. It'd be something that we could make into a thousand different things, no matter what we tried to do with it. That's good. I, that's good to know. I felt like at some point, it was just like you had gone like, I don't know, they, they keep telling me, because I was getting lots of different, uh, you know, this is going to happen, then it didn't happen, this is going to happen, it didn't happen, um, get Jack to sign off on this, and then nothing ever happened, and I felt bad throughout that process, so. Right. I'm glad it, <laughs> go ahead. I'm glad, I'm glad that you felt bad for everything, because I didn't bad, feel bad for anything, so you took it, you took all that away from me. <laughs> I didn't have to feel bad for anything. Okay. Um, it probably would have been easier to communicate had you been here. I would have felt like more, I mean, we would have been able to meet up and chat about it, but since, I mean, we weren't in the same vicinity, it was probably, you know, I had a shit ton of stuff going on and you had stuff going on. So anytime I got a message about it, I would just be like, yeah, sure. Yeah, sure. Yeah, sure. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, that's, that's been super helpful. And I think a lot of people like just don't believe that about like your response to the project. One of the questions that people are interested in is like, um, you know, what your relationship with Dave's work was prior to the project and right. like what your knowledge, I mean, because he has like a certain reputation. Um, I think. <laughs> yeah, that's you know, some of it um, probably inflated, but people want to know about your relationship uh, to your understanding of Dave and, and why you continue to be involved in the project. Uh, well, I think the most, um, the biggest reason is because I think it's funny. I think it's interesting. Um, and those two things are, you know, why I go to comics in the first place. Um, I think it's super important to read and see other people's opinions, if not to just uh, enforce your own resolve. So um, I hadn't, I was not, I was not super aware of all of Dave's work but I certainly had talked about it and read some of the things that he'd written, just being around comics, being around, I mean, most of the clientele that comes into comic book stores um, is very well versed in his stuff. I think at least the people that come came to my shop. Um, so I think it's just interesting to read. I think it's important and interesting to read other people's opinions and to be a part of a project where two people are brought together over their difference in lives and views. Like, that's cool. That's cool. A cool conversation to have. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> we got super lucky that we, we had you, uh, you know, perfect for what Dave was asking for and then like willing. Uh, at, at least the perception is that a lot of people wouldn't be willing to, especially have their image put into a book. <laughs> <laughs> You know, so I think we got really lucky. Uh, by the way, Jack Jack keeps talking about local heroes. That that really is a fantastic shop. Yeah, um, it's, it's the best it's, in the universe. <laughs> yeah, it's. Do you do you are you still involved down there? Uh, I still sell things. I'm selling masks there, um, but I no longer manage the shop anymore. That's the problem with a project that hangs out for four or five years before it gets <laughs> yeah. released. Um, and then you were also super trusting with us in that I would send the book to you and ask for edits and stuff. And you were pretty much like, nah, it's good. Just go for it. Like hands off. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I was hands off. Um, I, I feel like, you know, the most I could contribute was, I mean, obviously the images, you, you keep saying model, and I guess I was a model because, you know, you had to have something to, to draw off of. Um, but honestly, just to be a character of myself and 
you know, some of the, th some of my quotes be up there. Um, you know, I know that this character is not me. It is, you know, a reflection of a reflection of a reflection of me. So yeah, I'm, I was open to your ideas. Again, I trusted you, so. And I don't, I, I don't know if people will actually realize that when they read the book, that anytime we're having your Facebook posts, those are actual, like, you know, when I left ODU, we had become friends on Facebook. And so a number of the more like glamorous uh, photographs, like the one of you playing with the toys mm -hmm. and the one with the cool lighting effect, um, those were both taken by Josiah. Josiah, yes my love he's also yeah. in california now <clears throat> oh okay we're gonna shout out his instagram too yes it's trippy spaghetti trippy spaghetti <laughs> and he's a photographer mainly film and he his work is absolutely brilliant he's been pretty much the only person that i will let take pictures of me because i'm not a model i'm certainly not uh, someone who's comfortable in front of the camera all the time. So he's, he's one of the very few that I've let take my picture. Most of the pics on my Instagram that I have are by him. So he's awesome. Okay. Yeah. Cause the impression is that you're super comfortable in front of the camera. Well, it's all about the illusion. <laughs> and I mean, even when we were working together, you seemed real comfortable with it, but so right. that's good. Uh, but yeah, I don't, I, besides the photos that we took for Strange Death with Dawes, like I didn't take any photos specifically for You Don't Know Jack. Um, any of the ones from that were just, they're copy and pasted from Strange Death of Alex Raymond. Um, right. All the other photos were taken by Josiah. So <laughs> I, I basically Facebook stalked Jack after... Uh, <laughs> Once we came up with the idea of, of you don't know Jack, I said, well, you know, I always see Jack posting pretty funny Facebook posts, like these nice, terse, funny little slogans and things. And so any, any time in the book that we have a Facebook post from Jack, those are actual Facebook posts that we yes. used. <laughs> Which I thought was funny. Just just because when I was posting them, obviously it was for Facebook for friends that I had and I, I'm just being kind of, I don't know. I, a lot of it was, um, you know, my experience in the comic shop and just the funny shit that people would say to me. So I thought I would share it with a small group of people. So I think that it's hilarious and wonderful that other people are going to get to read it because I'm sure that there's many people that have had that, those experiences or situations happen to them too so so yeah you you get a writing credit from that um and then <laughs> I, I sent the, like we say in the book i sent those to dave and <laughs> i don't know it was just fascinating to watch his brain like i sent him all these posts and within two weeks he had pretty much generated the whole book yeah um, you know with his responses and then we went back and forth a couple times to tighten it up uh, the, I'll, I'll say the only one that didn't come from you, it was a story that Dave had, is a story about, uh, it's a real story apparently, where someone was shouted out very loudly in a, in a comic book shop that Boris Vallejo's art gave them a hard on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm pretty sure I heard that in my store, right? <laughs> oh, you I'm have pretty, heard that. I'm pretty sure every comic book store has heard that at one point or another <laughs> okay that was a story dave had but apparently jack can back it up um i also julie bell right her work is fantastic right that gives me a painter hard on the julie <laughs> bell her new stuff the dragons is uh the, those those are awesome pieces yeah um so I don't know. Is there anything else that you wanted to say about the project or that you think people should know about it? Um, buy it. <laughs> Follow me and Carson in blind faith and purchase this beautiful, beautiful literature. Uh, you won't regret it. 
Oh, oh, let me ask you about when you when you advertised this on your Facebook post, you took a little shot at Dave and then you said this is <laughs> definitely not feminist literature. Yeah, feminist literature does not come to mind. <laughs> yeah, no. Uh, well, it's, I don't know, what would you consider it? It's not anti-feminist, <laughs> is it? No, uh, I think the way that you summed it up, just it being a conversation, is probably the way I've described it the most, because obviously several people have either messaged me or talked to me about it. Um, it's a conversation. It's just a really, really well um, strung together funny book where uh, three weirdos are talking about things that are happening <laughs> all around the world and especially right now. Um, I think that, you know, it's an important commentary on yeah. art. When people are talking to you, like especially given Dave's reputation in the comic field, have you got like people who are coming to you and being like, yo, dude, like what are you, what are you doing? What are you thinking here? Or are all the people you know pretty cool about it? Uh, at least they're cool to my face. <laughs> <laughs> um, I tend to not, um, I don't know, if people, if people think like, what am I doing? I tend to not really. I mean, I'll just tell them. I don't really care if they think one way or the other about something that, that I'm doing. If I mean, nobody's ever going to have the same thought on a topic that I do, no matter how much I explain it to them or try to express myself, you know, in my mind, you know, once an artist or a writer or somebody creates something and releases it into the world to be free, it's not, it's not theirs anymore. It's like, you know, it's going to be consumed a million different ways and there's no way for that to be controlled I guess so uh, I like I like people being able to think about it whatever the way they want to well that's good to know because I think the perception that we get like because of the way the internet runs is that people were immediately gonna like hate because that's what you see in the comments but it's good to know that like in your personal life people aren't being like oh how dare you how dare I'm you good. work with this great <laughs> Good. Um, I think that people are so, I mean, people are so used to hearing their own opinions thrown back at them, you know, the echo chamber, you know, I only want to hear the things that I believe and that I think is just so dull and useless, you know, I just don't, I don't like it. Me neither. We got, I mean, again, I think we got lucky. <laughs> we really got lucky because a lot of people- <laughs> They all fell like, in place. Yeah. A lot of people have been like, hell no, you're not using my, you're not using my image with that dude. Um, <laughs> oh, one other, one other thing I want to ask about, because we make a big deal about it in, in the book, is you being a witch. Are you still- ah. Yes. Yeah, absolutely. Um, that's a huge part of my life. Uh, I think that you know, there's so many different ways you can call somebody a witch and mean it. And for me, um, it has always been and probably will always be just studying, learning about the natural world, about the supernatural world. Um, I'm not out here casting curses on people, or maybe I am, who knows. <laughs> but for me, it's about... Um, exploration of the unknown so just anything anything that you don't know I think that's probably why I'm very open to other people especially people who um, have a whole world of difference in their opinions uh, because I want to know why why do they think that why is why is a thing a thing I think that's the, the main direction for my practice and I, I just call it witchcraft because I think that is the most broadly um, that what I do can be described as. Why not just learning? Um, I mean, it, I suppose it could be. I, I suppose that it could be called learning. Um, but learning, I think, is too small. Learning is, you know, people go to school, they learn. People go outside, they learn. Um, for me, I think that witchcraft involves at least some element of um, focusing energy, whether that's um, actual uh, physical energy, things that you eat, um, or spiritual energy and things that you think. 
So uh, I think that just calling it learning is probably a little bit too vague for me. But I mean, you definitely had some like practice. And I think that's what you're talking about, right? That it, some of it yeah. has to go into practice. So you have some practice based stuff. It's not just knowledge acquisition. Yes, I do. Um, and I think that that, you know, the, I think that my favorite thing to do is freak people out, scare people. Um, this, that's, uh, that's one of the main things. Cause you always get rid of the people that you don't want around. You know, if you scare somebody off, then to me, at least that just means that, uh, they aren't down. They're not cool enough to hang. Um, so I think that, um, that has a lot to do with the naming of things. If you say that you're a witch, you probably get rid of a lot of really ignorant people who don't, who want to say that you worship Satan, who, I don't know, think that you're making potions and in the woods naked, which I might be, but <laughs> <laughs> not the only, uh, the only way that you can define witchcraft, I think. Yeah, that's, that's interesting. That's a good way to put it. Um, I like, I like that idea. I mean, cause we talked, this is one of the things that we talked about, um, is that I have that interest in the past in the occult and I've, I've moved far away from it, but, um, that like just the naming things, the generation of meaning for yourself. Right. Uh, that's, that seems like a very powerful, uh, a very powerful tool that's like really easy to use. And a lot of people overlook just the ability to generate your own narratives in life. Um, mm -hmm. You know, that seems to be like the major thing that we do as human beings is generate, generate narratives. And so I think that, yeah, taking explicit control over that smart. I think that um, one of my main, um, when I, when I'm trying to simplify it for people, for people like, oh, you say you're a witch, what does that mean? And for me, um, it just, it's another word for science. It's just a whole, it's like a, it's like, to me, science is just witchcraft that we've discovered reason for and logic for. Um, and it's just another word that, I, like you said, we can like kind of claim it. You know, I, I am all for reclaiming words and claiming words. And um, I think language is incredibly important to me and to a lot of people that, you know, just think in general. <laughs> It is. Well, and it'll be interesting. Yeah, language. Language is pretty important. It's nice to be able to use it. Uh -huh. um, I, I'll be curious, too, because a big part of the strange death of Alex Raymond stuff that you posed for, and I, I almost feel a, a little bad about it the more I got into the book, but like Dave's idea is that those original artists were bridging the gap between fiction and reality um, mm -hmm. by drawing so realistically and then they would draw stuff from real life into the strips and then they would and then they would draw stuff in the strips and try and export it back out into real life and then the more i started getting into the the book there's a lot of stuff where um in those old strips there's women posing in front of images of women who look like themselves and the, so then I started feeling bad because like what I had you do was mimic poses. When we did that photo shoot, I, ha I had you mimicking poses yes. um, <laughs> from, <laughs> from those strips. So we kind of, we stitched again. And again, this is like magical thinking. We, we stitched the fiction and the reality together. Um, yeah, and now we've made you a fictional character of yourself in a way book. cooler one which I enjoy. <laughs> Way cooler? I don't know about that. I mean, it's all your words. <laughs> yeah, I guess so. I think that was um, probably, you know, to draw it on in into one big bow. You know, when you took the class into your closet-sized ODU studio to show us some of your pieces, I was really impressed with the um, sort of there was a there was a good balance of very realistic and very dreamscape 
uh, mindscape type of imagery and I thought that, that was just super great and I was like yo if I could be in one of those paintings I would go let's go so now you're kind of in one you think <laughs> yeah in for sure yeah do you have any worry about about that spillover between the the fictional now that you're like a fictional character and the reality or do you feel that gives you more control not at all i'm not worried at all i think that there's no way for me to control any type of spillover anyway so i might as well not worry about it anyhow all right sweet so yeah i think that's a good that is a good place to wrap it up and that that was uh uh when we did that visit in my, I don't know, I shouldn't say visit, it was right down the hallway from the classroom. I yeah. think that's when I was like, hey, Jack, come here real quick. Uh, you run a comic shop, right? Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. So that worked out good then. See, it goes the other way too. You can be like, I want to be in one of those arts. Hey, come here. You want to be in one of these arts? <laughs> manifested. I manifested it into reality. <laughs> yeah. So I'll be curious. I'll be curious to see as this comes out in the world. We should yeah. uh, share stories about how any of this pops up in the real world. For sure. Uh, I think that, you know, I'm carefree now just because who knows how it's going to go. You could interview me in a year from now and I would be like, yo, I hate this. <laughs> but for now, it's, uh, that's all good for me. <laughs> well, luckily the only people who are going to see it are people who it's not going out into like comic. Well, except for Menachem, who's going to have it up in New York, but yeah. It's only going to people who want to see it. So I don't think there's going to be like a lot of, I don't think a lot of people are going to be complaining, but I will be interested to see uh, if you have any stories about how the fiction and the reality merge will pass yeah. them along. We'll have, to, we'll have to do a, a follow-up. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Uh, let's say six months after the book's been out, how has it changed things? Perfect. That's a date. All right. Deal. <laughs> All right. Thanks for your time, Jack. Uh, Thank you. Have, have fun in quarantine getting back to making your masks. I will try. All right. I'll talk to you later. Bye. Later.